Hello everyone, this is YML and welcome to another video where we discuss about why things happen in machine learning. Today we are going to talk about why we normalize the data before feeding it into a model. First of all, I would like to emphasize that data normalization is not necessary for all models, but only for models that are sensitive to scaling variations in the inputted features. The main class of models in this category are the ones that use gradient descent for learning, like logistic regression or neural networks. So I'll cover them in this video. However, I'll briefly discuss at the end of this video about which of the well-known models in machine learning require data normalization and which do not. So having said that, let's dig in. As I said in the beginning of this video, we'll focus on gradient descent based models and to simplify things, we are going to show what happens when we are trying to find the optimum of the function z equals to ax squared plus by squared while playing with the coefficients of the input variables. You can think of z as the loss, x and y as the weights and a and b as the scaling factors of your features. The first example we are going to explore is that where we have the coefficients equal to 1. So our features are on the same scale and here we can see that the model converges quite fast from a random point to the global minimum. One important thing here that we have to keep in mind is that the convergence rate is dependent on the learning rate alpha in this example. If we make it too small then the gradient descent will take forever to converge and if we make it too big, then gradient descent will start to diverge. So having said that, what would happen if we increase one of our coefficients and thus changing the scale of our features? Let's say that we increase the coefficients for the y variable. If we keep the same learning rate alpha, as you can see on the left image, the gradient descent still converges on the x-axis, but diverges on the y-axis. So why is that? Well, the answer is simple. The learning rate alpha is tuned for the scale of the x axis, but not for the scale of the y axis. And if we start to decrease the learning rate alpha, let's say from 0.1 to 0.05, then the gradient descent algorithm starts not to diverge on the y axis, but to oscillate between minus 2 and 2, which indeed is an improvement for our algorithm. However, this also affects the convergence rate on the x axis, making it slower as you might already have noticed. To make the algorithm converge, we have to decrease the learning alpha even further, let's say to 0.01. Now this learning rate is tuned for the y dimension and as you can see, the gradient descent quickly converges to the global minimum on the y axis. Unfortunately, on the x axis, the learning rate is too small and the algorithm converges really slowly. Also, if we increase the coefficient of y, then we have to decrease the learning rate alpha even more to have a stable convergence, which in turn will make the convergence on the x-axis even slower. And if we increase both the coefficient of x and y to the same value, then we would of course have to decrease the learning rate alpha, but the convergence rate would be the same as in the initial case. So, in a nutshell, this is why we normalize the input data, at least for models that are using gradient descent. Basically, you don't have to sacrifice convergence speed on some dimensions in order to gain stability on others. We can, on the other hand, use a different learning rate on each dimension, but this will make the tuning process of the model much harder since you are using more hyperparameters. And, as I promised, we will also present which models require input normalization and which models do not. So, for these models that require normalization, we have models that rely on curve fitting, such as the linear models like linear regression or logistic regression, neural networks, or support vector machines. Then, we have clustering algorithms like key, nearest, neighbors, and Another category of models that require input normalization are those used for matrix factorization. And finally, we have the dimensionality reduction algorithms like principal component analysis or PCA. So you can see that quite a lot of models require input data normalization, and this is why it's so popular. However, as I said before, there are models that don't require data normalization, and here we have first the models that rely on rules. These models will not be affected by any monotonic transformation of the variables and because scalys is a monotonic transformation, the relative order of smaller to larger values in a variable is maintained post the scaling. 
Examples in this category include all the three algorithms like Reno Forest, Cart, Gradient Boosted Decision Trees, and so on. Also, another category of models that do not require input normalization are the ones that rely on the distribution of the variables like Naive Base. So, this was the video for today. I hope you found the information contained into it useful. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to be up to date with the new content. And see you next time. Bye bye.